I've got an idea for you. If you're into photography, you probably deal with this already. You just might not think about it this way. But before we get into it, let's make a fire. If I could give you one tip to just like completely transform your photography, that tip would be. You really just want to look out for that. It's that simple, really. Today, I want to talk to you about possibility, luck, and putting yourself in situations to create memorable photos. We'll leave that in there. So, once again, we've got some notes. I'll keep it short. As you progress as a photographer, you begin to understand, you begin to understand how to make good photos happen. It is a necessary skill, but you also get pickier about light, locations, conditions, and what you consider good. For me, and a lot of people I know, that means becoming more selective on when the camera comes with you. Bad deal, right? So here is one of the main takeaways I want you to get from the video. I wrote it down, I don't wanna mess it up, just think about this. If you're going to limit what you photograph to basically just what you plan for, you're closing the door to being lucky or fortunate, whatever you wanna call it. You're closing the door to photos that are potentially so much better than anything you've done before. And to me, that is a pretty scary thought. I've got a visual aid. I'm going to run get it. I've got some prints here and I chose them all for a reason. I'm just gonna pick a print, briefly talk about it, and maybe you can infer the lesson I'm trying to get across. I'm gonna start with photo number one. Shot this on a Leica M7 and Portrait 800 at 50 millimeters. And what was happening was we were going to visit a good friend who lives in a cool spot, scenic, it's in the mountains and I always bring my camera. I was not going to bring it this particular day as far as like when we left the car to walk around. I was gonna leave it in the car because it was snowing so hard, you couldn't see anything. And I just thought, you know, you can't see the mountains, you can hardly see in front of you. I don't need to bring it, but I just did. And this is Claire's horse, Coco, which is actually about this size in real life. It's like that tall. But yeah, this snow kind of cleared to the perfect amount. The horses were running around and I just picked up the camera and shot this one frame. This is probably better than any sort of horse photo or animal photo I've ever taken. That's what I think personally. Okay, number two. This one's wrapped in plastic. That's a Twin Peaks reference. This photo was actually taken on a photo shoot, but it was for a cell phone company in Iceland, and we were not shooting this cool scene. We were shooting someone holding the cell phone in a different location, and we were waiting, you know, there's like 20 people on set, and it's just like, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait. It was pretty poor light that evening, and the production guy, Dati, hi Dati, he moved the car down the beach, the light came out. Again, there are like 20 people over here. We're talking about going over here. And I look over and I see this light happening. I didn't, I didn't let my camera go back to one of the assistants. I just kept it on me because we were in such a beautiful place. The light comes out. You can see he's in the car. I just took this picture of him. The light went away. And so even on a photo shoot, it made me think about all of the little missed opportunities that happened. So once again, you know, this was not in the shot list. This was not planned. Got lucky. This photo right here, this was halfway planned. I knew the location, I knew the timing of the year, and on the morning that I was supposed to go out, I checked the weather, and instead of being partly sunny, it was just full overcast and rain. I don't know, that time of the year, like once it starts raining, it usually just keeps going for a while, and there was basically no possibility that anything was gonna happen, and I thought, I'm, I'm up already, I'll make a cup of coffee and just, cruise out there. I was with my buddy Isaac. We went out, took a whole bunch of bad photos, whole bunch of nothing happened. You know what? At the very end, this light came out for 30 seconds, maybe a minute. Took this, took this photo and it was gone. Normally, 
it would have been pretty easy to just say, you know what, let's try tomorrow. But I had tried to get this photo for about five years previously and it happened that morning. Let's go to November. It was the autumn of 20 and 19. And I was driving to California to shoot I'm driving to California to shoot a project and I was driving through the Utah, Nevada desert and it was really good light out and there was nothing to, oh man, that's bad. Whew. Okay, had to do a little reset. November of 20 and 19, I am driving to California to photograph project. I'm driving through the desert in Utah I don't know anyone, I don't know any of those places out there. So I pulled over a couple of times and just took some random photos and, you know, I just kind of drove off and saw this exit. I thought, you know what, there, there's something. Yeah, I'll take this exit, just take a break in the parking lot. And I pulled in and I saw this. And I grabbed my camera with a 50 millimeter lens. I took the photo, I think I took two photos. There it was, you know. Didn't see the gas station from the highway, really. Didn't see the car. Just thought, you know, I'm going to try to be in this area. I have no prospects, but geez, it looks cool. I didn't say geez, but you know what I mean. Okay. I am flying home to Kalispell. We're going over one of the mountain ranges here locally. I normally sleep on the plane, but there had been like wildfires, forest fires. And I thought, you know what, just stay awake. And as we go over the mountain ranges, it's just like complete smoke. You can't see anything, you can't see anything. And I thought, you know, this kind of sucks. This is a bust. I might as well just put the window down and go to sleep. And once again, I had that little voice that was like, you know, just see what could happen. Just, just keep looking. So I did that. By this time, I thought we had kind of passed the mountain range and all of a sudden the smoke clears and holy crap, look at that. I think I took, once again, two photos. This was the one. The first one I took was the one, much like the car photo. And I took one just for safety. This, this is an iPhone shot, and there it was. Same thing with this photo. Wildfire smoke, we were going out with friends. It was smoky, nasty out. Um, shooting in wildfire smoke is actually really beautiful, but it was so bad that I didn't think anything cool would happen. But I got this. Well. I hope a lesson emerges from those prints. When you are willing to go out time and time again, whether or not anything good happens, you're opening up the opportunity to be lucky with your photography. And it's not just getting photos that are better than good. A lot of those photos that I've taken that, you know, have turned out to be memorable for me and people that look at my work, They've been outside maybe the scope of what I would have considered good or thought about to photograph. You know, they've informed my work and how I see the world. And so I didn't just get the benefit of one good photograph. I got a photograph and it honestly kind of expanded my viewpoint of photography and of possibility. And so the way I think about it now is that, you know, when I go out, anything could happen. And I think that's the mindset that you really need to have in photography. So I'd love to hear if you have any similar stories like this. You know, these kind of stories are really interesting to me because they can happen anytime. That possibility is always there. So I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. There's a new video next week and there's probably a couple of videos somewhere here and on the channel that you haven't seen yet. Have a good one. How red are my eyes right now? Pretty red. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs>